Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you what is new in Go 1.16. Go 1.16 was released on February 16, 2021, which was about how, one a week, one week ago, more or less. Um, what happened with Go 1.16 is that a bunch of new Go module changes were introduced, and I will be covering a few of them. But also I want to call out this link, this presentation that happened in GopherCon because during this presentation there was this new website uh, or service that was introduced called Play with Go that allows any people, anyone trying to learn a little bit of Go to understand a few of the new changes that happened that are available in, in some of the new versions with the specific instructions. It's sort of like an education website. So I will be linking and showing you a few of the examples that happen to be covering some of the new fe features introduced in Go 1.16. So let's jump into the new changes. If you want to install Go 1.16, there are a few ways to do it. The usual steps will be to use GoGet and then do the download. But if you use Homebrew, just recently the formula was updated you can actually update and upgrade Go. So that's amazing if you happen to have, uh, if you happen to be using Mac OS. Depending, in, or if you, uh, depending on if you use Linux or Windows, I am uh, not for Windows. There, is, there are already available a few of the binaries that you can install. For Linux, it depends on what distribution you use. If you happen to be use, using Docker for distributing your binaries, there is already uh, an image that happens to be using Alpine uh, using 1.16. There is a version for Alpine 3.12 as well, in case you were wondering. So what did exactly change? So a lot of things changed, but I just want to call out a few of the new features that I, I do like. So for example, the, big, the biggest one will be Go Embed. I think everybody's just talking about this one. And what happened is that before Go Embed or Go or, or this instruction existed or was part of the actual runtime of the Go toolchain is that there are a few other uh, third-party packages that allow you to embed binaries or rather embed files in your final binary. One of them was Go bin data and the other one was Packer. Now, technically you can still use those, but, but in practice you should, be, you, start, you should start using this one instead. And the way it works is, let me show you the example. Um, I have a, an example right here that the link to the code, to, the, the link to the code will be in the description as usual. And the way it works is that you have to literally just call or define this uh, new instruction called go embed and indicate what file you have to use. You need to import the embed package. And with that, there are a few ways to do it. You can use a slice of bytes, you can use a string, and there are some other ways to do it. And it literally you can access the content of the content of that file depending on how you define it in the first place. So if I run this package, you will see that I literally printing out um, the license twice, which is right here. Now, if I compile it into an actual binary, and then let's say I decide to remove the file, you will notice that it's no longer there, and I run main again, you're going to see the content of the file here, and then the error that says we cannot open the file and that that is intentional because there is an, this is another change that happened in 1.16 i will cover it just next but i want to show you how it actually works it's super easy to use it and really 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 cool um, if we go back to the other examples is that installing go programs um, happens without using the tools go paradigm which i don't know if you are familiar with but one way to uh, depend on, on tools written in Go was using this paradigm that literally allows you to import the specific packages. But by doing that, what is happening is that your Go mod will actually include the dependencies. Now, and this happened before because you were not able to do something like this. Um, if you notice here, hopefully let me make this a little bit bigger. If you notice I'm calling go install tags and the whole instruction, and if I do something like that, but before doing that, I actually specify the version that I want to install, which we we'll call it right here. What is going to happen is that the Go mode, the file, will not change. If we were doing, if we were using Go 1.15 or even before that, the actual 
calling this function, calling this uh, instruction will actually go and modify Go mod. Now with Go 1.16, you can actually install packages using the version directly or or tools directly and that will not update your go mod that's really cool and it's most likely it's going to change the way we are using um, the tools paradigm and perhaps we don't need to use it anymore if we go back to the example um, for example to the agenda that i have here this is another thing that is really cool and this is the the service i was telling you it's called go play with go no, I'm sorry. Play with Go, and I will ha I will have the link in the description as well if you want to check that out. The way it works is that there is this hypothetical case where you perhaps you release a Go Go module version that was not uh, maybe it had some bugs and maybe it was not stable enough. You can actually indicate that you want to retract it, and the way it is is that you need to in in indicate that version right here, and you can say you know what this version that I release don't use it so what happens is that if that version happens to be the latest one when we do the your, your users happen to be using that package instead of pulling that version they will pull the previous version so it will indicate the go toolchain the go get command and instead of pulling the most recent version it will pull the most recent version that happens to be um, the ones, the most recent allowed version to to say it in a different way. So this is really cool. You can indicate, okay, this version and this version don't use them anymore because perhaps they have bugs, or maybe there are some security issues, or whatever the reason may be. As you, as a Go author and a package developer and a package author, and you release your own versions of your own packages. This is really cool. I really like it. Now, I made a mistake right there. I opened it in a, in a new window. I should have opened it in a new tab. But it doesn't matter it's right here so what happened here with this new change is that most of the uh, well literally all of the the not all of them but some of them uh, some of the functions that uh, were available in iutil io util are now available in either io or i or os depending on where they came from in the first place in practice this doesn't break your previous binaries they do still compile and work, but it, this does change the way we should be writing new code using Go, Go 1.16. So let me show you what this means in reality. Uh, this is an example I was showing you just now. Uh, this using the new API, but if I happen to use IOTIL, IOTIL, IOUTIL, you will notice that this will still compile. It will still work. That that won't, that won't change. And this is because you know Go is Go is backwards compatible. It's trying to co to maintain that um, compatibility for any new version that happens. So that won't change for a while. It's not Go. Check out this kit. Check out. If we go back to the other things that I want to mention here, is that there is new this new function called Notify Context. That this is really cool because it allows you to specify a context as a way to cancel or rather when defining this function you can actually cancel the context that you passed in by receiving a signal this is and the, the biggest example i can give you is that if you happen to be building a tool that happens to be processing different uh, data sources for example i wrote this blog post that happens to include five different posts and the idea is that you have a, a tool that is going to be downloading content from the from from the internet using a web api it's going to be processing that that data and this then is going to be inserting that data in in batches into a postgres database so all of that happens in parallel using go routines and then if we define a new signal using this new api it would allow you to, if the user decides to cancel the whole process, it will not only cancel the program, but it will also cancel all the other go routines that were running in the first place. This is amazing. I really like this new feature. And one way to show you uh, how it works is if I run run main, just wait for it. It's going to wait one min one second and it will exit. But if I run it again and then I, I cancel it, you will notice that it will receive it will receive the syntax the syntax the sync now 
and it will stop the processing of or any of go routines that happen to be used in the same context. This is uh, this is really cool. Not only changes the way we're going to be building not only uh, CLIs but perhaps uh, processes that happen to be used in the same context for uh, communication and orchestration. That that's cool in my opinion. So I know there are more things to available in Go 1.16. I I highly recommend you to look to look at the um, to the release page. Not only this one that includes the downloads, but also the one that includes how to uh, all the release notes and whatnot, so you can actually see what really changed. Um, there are a lot of new things like the Go Fed changes, the changes included to the testing package, and and are more things like that. But I think the the highlights for this for this specific release are the Go Embed uh, new uh, option, the new feature, and also as well the new changes related to the Go modules. Everything super cool. And with all of that being said, you know, thank you for watching. I really hope you you start using Go 1.16 sooner than later. And until then, I will talk to you next time. Okay, as usual, just keep it up. Don't give up. See you.